Hello, everyone. I'm here to talk about how neoliberalism has affected development. This is a big topic, but I'm going to focus on three key aspects of it. The first is how neoliberalism has emerged since basically since the 1980s as a, an ideological framework within which development and all things take place. So it's the idea that there is an, um, the emphasis on free markets, supposedly on free markets, determining all aspects of economic behavior in rich and poorer countries. And the, th this is a throwback to the 19th century idea of the laissez-faire, the idea of liberal economies uh, with free competition. Now, the problem is that we don't have free competition now because corporations, large corporations can control markets so it is really false to think of these as being uh, um, market competitive uh, relationships. Now, the other aspect of, of this dominance of neoliberalism is the pushback on the governments uh, to reduce their role. This is the so-called rollback of the state. And this has had a number of effects which are, are um, around the deregulation, uh, taking away of regulations from how governments are able to control what goes on. And this includes issues of safety. So for example, two very prominent examples of this in recent years has been what's happened with uh, Boeing with the 737 MAX plane, two of which crashed killing hundreds of people. And it's now been shown that it was the reduction in control and regulation of safety in that which led to these planes being in service when they should not have been. And in London, the burning down of an apartment block called Grenfell Tower, where material was used in the construction, the refurbishment of this building, which were highly flammable. And this building burnt down three years ago, killing 72 people. And this has also been shown very clearly to be a result of deregulation around issues of building quality and building uh, safety. Um, so that this is one aspect is the dominance of the market and reduction in the role and significance of the state. The, um, and this has affected relationships between rich and poor countries as well. In particular, um, something emerged called the Washington Consensus, which is not an official thing. It is just the fact that the, the American government, which promoted uh, neoliberalism, is in the same city as the IMF and the World Bank. But this was in conjunction with the World Trade Organization in Geneva. And this um, enabled neoliberal policies and attitudes to be spread, especially to countries in the global south. And this happened through conditions on how loans were given by the World Bank and the IMF. So these conditions insisted that you will not get this loan unless you change how your government behaves, how you reduce government spending, including on welfare, and uh, free up the capital markets and the uh, foreign exchange markets and reduce re regulation of foreign businesses in your economies. And this um, had a very harmful effect on welfare spending and education in some African countries, which led to a pushback, which was called growth with equity, which um, led to poverty reduction strategies, which were supposed to overcome some of the most harmful aspects of neoliberalism and the way it affected developing countries. And I think that the third aspect is how it's affected research, because now researchers and organizations like IDS have to bid in the marketplace to get research funding and make proposals which are now in competition with other research organizations and with private sector uh, consultancy companies. And I think that this actually constrains how we can think clearly about what causes a problem because the, the funders of research can now frame uh, the way in which problems are addressed in ways which do not, are not necessarily conducive to doing good research, which enables us actually to explain why a problem exists. And those are the three key areas that I would highlight of how neoliberalism has affected development.